Why hello lovely humans! Welcome back to part two of reading equations. Yay! So I apologize for the little buzzing sound in the last video. I was charging my phone and did not realize that it makes a little bzzz. So kind of super annoying. Let me know if you're like, oh, I can't handle this and I can try to re-record that video. Anyway, so in this second part, we are going to look at how we use our understanding of the symbols of mathematics to apply the language of math to a specific example in the world. So whether you're doing physics or chemistry or engineering or computer programming, when we are taking the language of mathematics and using it to apply to a given problem, we have to be very, very clear about the context of that problem. So to look at an example, let's take one of the most famous equations, Einstein's E equals MC squared. Yes. So there's a reason why this equation is super famous because it is pretty mind blowing. I also wanted to tackle this equation because it's often really misunderstood or taken out of context or put in a context that it doesn't actually mean. So in addition to understanding that, okay, we know what this equals sign is, we know that, well, hopefully we know that there's an implied multiplication symbol between the M and the C, and we know that this is an exponent. Okay, that's cool. So we know how to read the symbols, but now to understand what the equation is saying, we have to understand the scientific principles from physics that it's calling on. And so that requires us to understand what these letters actually mean as specifically as possible. So this E represents not just energy, but rest energy. And it's even more specific than that. It's the rest energy of a particular single fundamental particle. So that would be something like an electron or a proton or a neutron, or if you wanted to really dive deeper, you could talk about the rest energy of a particular quark. Quarks make up protons and neutrons, but electrons are a true fundamental particle, meaning as far as we know, there's nothing that actually makes up an electron. It just is an electron. So rest energy of one specific, oopsies, specific particle. Cool. Okay. And now we understand that we are looking at a quantity called the rest energy, which is different than kinetic energy or potential energy. And we are saying that it is equal to the mass of that particular particle, which is what M stands for, times the speed of light squared. So interestingly enough, this is kind of what is called a constant of proportionality, meaning the speed of light uh, for this context doesn't change significantly. Um, so we could also say that what this equation is telling us is that the rest energy of a single specific particle is proportional to the mass of that single specific particle. And that is amazing because what Einstein did when he came up with this, when I shouldn't say, when he discovered this particular equation is that mass and energy are interchangeable. So if you were to take the mass of a particular particle and break it apart somehow, you would get out a bunch of energy. And actually this equation is what led him to discover nuclear physics. Um, and together with a lot of other physicists around the world, they realize that if you take a bunch of mass and you break it apart, like for example, if you take a radioactive particle like uranium and you break it apart, you convert that mass into energy and then you get a big explosion. So um, energy and mass are interchangeable, but in a very, very specific context. And note that this is not total energy. That's not all of the energy contained in the particle because there's other forms of energy that we are not dealing with in this equation. There's, like I mentioned, kinetic energy or energy of motion, like uh, when you are uh, moving or changing directions. And there is potential energy due to forces like gravity and electromagnetism. So this is only rest energy. If you ignore all of the other types of energy and you assume that your particle is not moving, which is not really the case for any particles, except maybe if they're in a black hole, but we don't really know. 
Anyway, so if you ignore or remove all of the other types of energy of those particles, then you can say, okay, the rest energy or the non-moving energy of that particle is equal to its mass times the speed of light squared. So context is super, super, super important. Um, and like I mentioned, no particle is really at rest. But the importance of this is to tell us that energy and mass are different forms of the same thing. And the constant that um, is our proportionality constant is equal to uh, the speed of light squared. Okay, so I hope that helps. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions about this particular equation and what it actually means and its implications for the universe. Hopefully I described that in enough detail. But the general gist is that if you're reading a math equation in the context of an application, you really have to understand either the science or engineering principles behind that application to really understand what the equation is saying. We can't just take these symbols outside of that context and give them meaning because it's the science and engineering principles that really enhance their meaning. Okay, so let me know if you, there are any other specific equations that you'd like me to help interpret, um, or if you have any questions about reading math equations in general. And lastly, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, and if you like these videos, please support me on Patreon. You can find me at Jen Foxbot. That uh, would allow me to continue making these really fun videos and use my time and energy for math education for all of the people. So thank you very much to Christopher M and Lamore F for your continuing support. And let me know if you have any particular requests, this is the general you, for math topics or other educational topics. Thank you very much and we'll see you next time. Bye!